Okay, I find a slug for in here. And uh, it's actually from another Holocrafters that I haven't done yet, haven't even looked at yet. It's a Holocrafters uh, single channel CB radio. Funny how they used the same size thread and size on the slug. And uh, I have reached out to a couple companies, haven't heard anything back. I just can't seem to find one that big. The 3 8 3 8 thread. So but anyhow, <clears throat> so one of the interesting things, things I found here, and maybe somebody watch, watching this can can shed some light on this, because I don't know if it's typical to do this, but I have noticed that this radio has a very loud local oscillator, but only on the 4 band, which is around 16 to 45 megahertz. The other bands don't seem to be that loud. I can hear it on other radios. Uh, but more ironically, and I'll have to turn the, uh, the scope on so that we can get a look at that. I hear a sound. Well, I see a sound. And I have a feeling it's the local oscillator. So what I'm going to try and do is just jump off the local oscillator and see if the sound goes away. But I'll show you what I mean here in just a moment. So what I'm going to do is turn off all the generators so I don't have any signals going into anything. No signals. Let me take this off here. This was just for a test I was doing. <clears throat> okay, so let me back off of this so you can kind of see what I'm doing here a little bit. And this is just a scope probe. And I'm going to put it on one side's on ground. The other side is on the uh, A terminal for the antenna. And I'll show you what I have on my scope right now. Now we're around 16 megahertz. So let's spin this around too so I can see what we're looking at here. Okay. Nice signal there, isn't it? And let's see if you can read what the frequency is. 1554 something. So that first giveaway that's probably going to be the local oscillator. Well, let's just see what that scale is. That is on the. Uh, let's see, we'll go to 100 millivolt, 200 millivolts, and it's on the 200 millivolt scale, and it's basically two. Uh, segments high, so that's 200, so it's 400 millivolts, so it's almost half a volt. Now that's on the 4 band. Now let me show you when I switch down to 3 or 2. There's 3. You know, there's some noise there, but nothing like we were hearing. There's 3. Well, let me leave it there's three, there's two band, there's one band. Back to the four, there's the four band. Now, it works, but like I said, if you have another, say for instance, you have a CB radio on near this and you tune it, as you're going past through the 27 megahertz band, you'll definitely get a lot of noise on the CB band. Or on the 28, the 10, the uh, 10 meter hand band. If you have something on 28, as you tune through with this, you'll you'll hear it. So let me uh, just get the schematic real quick, and we'll try and jump out the local oscillator and see what happens. Then, if that does go away, at least we know kind of where to look. Okay, I'll just bump it. So uh, if you look here, this is the local oscillator stage right here. This, where it goes right to the pin 4 on the switch, this is the local oscillator section for the fourth group, the, the fourth band. Uh, so, if I pull B, that's the, uh, on the coil, if I pull B to ground, 
that should stop that. <coughs> so I'll show you where B is, and then of course we're going to check just to make sure that uh, my calculations are correct. And I don't have some kind of crazy voltage on there that uh, I arc weld the cabinet together. So let me see if I can pull this down, and I'll show you what I'm doing here on the radio. So right here, and my finger's a good distance away, I'm just moving it away. <clears throat> this is the local oscillator adjustment for that that I want. So let me spin this around to make sure that we, keep, that we keep in visual contact to what I'm doing. So right here, let me make sure I point to the right one. Okay, good. So right there, and this terminal right here, this is the plastic driver. Right here goes to the switch. And that should be B. So let's take a look. I'll show you. Ah. In case you couldn't see it very well. So it'd be this guy right here. Make sure you get the right one. Okay, right here is the B terminal, and that goes basically up to the adjustment for the gang capacitor, the big potato slicer thing that you always see in radios up top. So, let me just make sure, I'm going to put the old voltmeter on there and make sure, again, like I said, I don't have some kind of voltage on there that I miscalculated. So here it goes. Okay, nothing. Well, very, very slight. But let's just see what happens. So I'll show you, and you can watch. You saw what I was doing, you heard the, the noise. So let me show you the scope, what happens when I basically turn off the local oscillator. Okay, so I'm going to turn it off right now. I'm going to jump to that B terminal. Huh, that goes away. Of course, the radio won't work with the local oscillator jump dot. So, that being said, now at least we know where that noise is coming from. But the question is, is it normal or is it not? It works like that. So, let's do something else. Let me pause this for a second while I see where I can grab onto. Okay, now you're going to get dizzy. So, what I want to do is put the scope right, actually at C26, right at that, that junction right there. That way when I run through this we should see all the different uh, local oscillator choices. So. That's that. I'm going to show you down here where I found that. And if you see the scope where it goes in, right back in there is that cap. I can't really tell, but let's look at now when we switch bands. Oh, by the way, that's um, 2.2 2 .2 volts RMS. So peak to peak it's 6.4 volts, which to me seems a little odd, but we're going to go down to the next band. 
Okay, that's band 2. And that's even higher voltage, but yet that band doesn't bleed through at all. Whoa, look at the voltage on that one. 10 volts. That's okay, that's 2.19 roughly. So let me see what... Uh, so somebody did ask me about looking at the local oscillator and there you have it that's the voltage so as i tune this no matter where i tune this it's always going to be 455 ahead of what the dial's showing me on the radio um here i found i found like a, a nice <clears throat> round easy way to do that so the scope showing 1.05 megahertz and well, let me see now it's going to change a little bit it's not going to be perfect but I, I find one that works real nice and it's easy to line up i'm going to move this for a second so if you look at that oh gosh come on if you can see what the uh the line is on it's on 0.55 megahertz, so plus 455 equals 1005, and that's about what we have right there. <clears throat> now, as you go up and down the scale, it's going to change a little bit, but you're always going to be. 455 with this radio 455 above the frequency or the station you're listening to if you're watching the local oscillator so if you're listening to on the am dial 1250 then it's going to be what's that <laughs> here use the calculator again it was going to be 1250 plus 455 so i let me put this back on the stand so let me just see if I can tune in a, a 1250 station and just see where we wind up with the local oscillator. I'll, I'll find something on AM. Okay, in my area, 1020 is this radio station here. The dial's a little bit off right now, but again, I don't have the bottom plate on it. And once I put the bottom plate, I still have to do all that alignment. Uh, but anyhow, I'm on 1020 right now. And if you look, 14, 14.4, um, so 14.75, 1.475 megahertz. So if you do 1.475 megahertz and you take away 455, you end up with 1,020 or 1 1.02 megahertz. So anyhow, as you see, and if you went to a different radio station again it would always be up that and the uh, that's the idea behind that super hedronide. it mixes the two stations together the local oscillator and the uh, tuned in frequency to come in with 455 just because that's what this radio uses again like I said as the uh, basically the carrier throughout the radio some not everyone's 455 but that's the most common for AM so enough said about that I think I beat that up pretty good just still curious about why I have such a strong signal with the antenna from the uh, local oscillator but only on that one band so I'm gonna look around at some stuff in here maybe come up with something and uh, maybe if I post this and haven't figured out anything any if anybody has any good ideas things for me to look at I can look at them uh, basically I, I did look at things and everything's isolated but you know a radio this old somebody may have made a change to it that I'm going to have to find uh, so quickly to show you what I did is you can see the oscope lead going in there and there's a uh, an insulator on a capacitive lead or a capacitor lead and I'm actually clipped onto the insulator not the lead itself because I didn't want to drag down the local oscillator at all uh, and just putting that in there it does kind of change a little bit but still it works very well uh, the ground of course is there and I'll show you on the scope and on the uh, frequency generator what I have let me pause this 
because I can do that now. Then. Okay, so I'm trying to get both the scope and the frequency counter for the generator in. So I have it set at 18 megahertz or 18.02 megahertz, and uh, the da the the radio is actually tuned to 18. But again, like I said, it's an analog dial, so you, you do the best you can. To me, it looks like it's right on 18. That's pretty close, 18.2. So, in theory, the uh, local oscillator, where I showed you I had the scope lead hooked into, should be about 455 uh, kilohertz between, behind that. So, I mean, basically, uh, 18, if it was 18, we'd take around 455. So it should be around... 17.545 yeah too many numbers there um, so 18.5 about 18 or 17.540 so it would be 455 below that so if you can see the scope and I may have to zoom into just the scope to show you and I'm not sure if you can hear if you can still hear the tone a little bit in the background so it means that I'm still on frequency. I don't know if I can zoom in anymore. Oops, sorry. I'm trying to zoom in. Okay, well, as I'm looking here, it looks like that's about the best I can get it right now. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. I'll have to look in on the uh, computer and see how it looks. Anyhow, enough about Enough about the camera. As you can see, I had to drop that down. That's 455 less. Works works very well. Uh, but anyhow, that was if you wanted to check that. So what I I'd recommend just follow the book. Uh, but see if you can find as much information as you can, especially about these older radios. Like I said, it never even dawned on me that uh, three of the bands would be above 455 and one would be below. Had I not find that in the tech manual, I'd probably still be looking for the solution. Anyhow, maybe that'll help somebody out that's working on one of these. Looks like I got a lot of editing to do on this. And uh, thanks for watching. See you later.